The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Well, hello, everyone. This is Dennis K. here with Blaze Islands Real Estate. Hang on one second. There you go. Okay, we'd like to welcome everyone to today's webinar. And uh, just going to give everybody a second or two to get settled in. And first of all, what I'd normally like to do is do an equipment check. So if on your screen you can see my opening slide with a picture of myself, uh, my a couple of the shows I've been on, and you can hear my voice okay, please type in yes in the question box. And we can make sure the audio and the video is working properly before we begin. So if we can ask a couple of you to do that, that would be great. Okay. Oh, excellent. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. James, Adam, appreciate it very much. If my voice seems a little off today, it is. I've been fighting a nasty cold. My throat's a little sore, but rather than cancel the webinar, which I did not want to do, we have a record attendance today. I'm just going to try to fight through with, it, with a uh, little bit of a sore throat, but should be okay. I might take the occasional break to take a drink of water to stop coughing but uh, other than that I think we're gonna have a pretty good attendance today and uh, talk a lot of, uh, about a lot of exciting things going on in Belize particularly when it comes to financing so one of the main questions I've been getting a lot lately is how do I finance my purchase in Belize and the purpose of today's webinar is to help everyone get a really good idea of what it takes to get in the game to buy something in Belize, whether it be a piece of land or a condo or a home, the different financing options that are available to you. And also I want to conclude with some creative financing things, tips and tricks that you might not have thought of because typically we don't use these in the US or Canada, but they're very often done in Belize. And with these, I think some of you might be uh, finding a way to get in the game sooner rather than later. So thank you in advance for showing up. And also we're gonna have plenty of time for Q&A as uh, long as my voice holds out. Uh, so get your questions ready and I'll be taking questions about financing and anything else you wanna talk about here as we go through. All right, so let's get into it. First of all, my name is Dennis Kay. My wife and I moved to Belize in 2003. We lived in the mainland of Belize and also on the islands and traveled extensively through it. And uh, we built a, a very nice career investing in real estate ourselves. And then we have decided to try to help others uh, to do the same. Uh, so because of our investing and selling real estate in Belize, I've been on shows such as House Hunters International, Live Here, Buy This, uh, some very uh, nice uh, pod lifestyle podcast or real estate investing podcast. And you might be able to check me out on the internet. I can send you some links to some of those if you want to check those out. But today, uh, like I said, I want to focus on this quote from a Zig Ziglar. This is going way back now. Uh, if any of you uh, remember Zig, uh, he said, you can get anything you want in life if you help enough other people get what they want. And so today is all about you. Uh, I want to help you to see if you can actually get into something in Belize to provide the lifestyle that you're looking for. If you're looking at Belize on the internet, which is why you're probably here on this uh, webinar today, then you're probably most attracted to it by the lifestyle that it offers. So the real estate portion is just a tool to help you to enjoy the lifestyle. Uh, so you know, know Belize has two components to it, a mainland component, which is part of Central America, which has the beautiful mountains of Belize, the jungles, the pristine rivers, the Mayan ruins, uh, things like that, a lot of wildlife. But it also has the Caribbean component, so what I promote is enjoying a lifestyle that includes both. My favorite place in Belize is Amargus Key. It's where Steph and I have spent the most time. It has your snorkeling, diving, fishing, sailing, boating, uh, just pretty much anything to do with water sports. So that's why it's the number one tourist destination in the country of Belize. A lot of people come down there just for the fishing, the deep sea fishing, the flats fishing, the bonefish, uh, things like that. Also, it's got um, excellent diving. It's considered one of the best dive destinations in the world. Of course, it's got uh, excellent diving just off the coast of Ambergris Key with the various wall dives, but also the world-famous Blue Hole attracts a lot of destination divers. And interestingly, we have a Sir Richard Branson coming down in just a month or two, uh, and he's going to be uh, exploring the bottom of the Blue Hole by means of a private submarine, so that's kind of cool. That's going get, to get garner us a, a lot of additional attention. So that's just a brief overview of, uh, of what I'm going to talk to you about today. And uh, one of my favorite quotes from uh, Robert Kiyosaki is this, rather than saying, I can't afford this, ask a different question, 
how can I afford this? And I've had the opportunity to meet Robert and do a little work with him on the uh, Summit at Sea Investor Cruise. And uh, Robert's a great guy. If you better, if you are a follower of Robert Kiyosaki, you know uh, for him it's all about cash flow. And the reason I bring this up is because a lot of people come to me looking for cash flow properties in Belize. It's a little different in Belize than in the United States and Canada. I'm going to show you why as we go through. But also, a lot of you have been researching the websites that sell real estate on Ambergris Key, and you might have come to the conclusion that Ambergris Key is just too high of a market uh, for you to get in the game reasonably. And that can be true depending on what you're looking at. You might have written off Ambergris Key as a place you just can't afford, but I hope I can show you today some alternatives when it comes to financing and different properties so that you could ask a different question. How can you afford uh, to own property, invest in property on Ambergris Key and enjoy the lifestyle that you're looking for? So that's what I'm going to do today. All right, so let's begin. This is going to be uh, a webinar based on financing your dream home or investment property in Belize. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the different options available for financing and then also present along with that option a real life example of how you can purchase a particular property using that style of financing. All right, now as we go through this information again, if you have questions that come up, please type them right away in the uh, question box. I'll try to answer them if it's appropriate right then on the spot. And if it's not, I might delay a little bit uh, towards the end of the webinar. First of all, number one question I get is, will my US or Canadian bank finance a property in Belize? The short answer is no that American banks normally do not loan for properties offshore. It's not just Belize, but it's any other country. And the reason is simple. If you buy a property in Belize or Panama or Dominican Republic and you get a loan from a U.S. bank for that property, what happens if you default? Well, the United States or Canada, it's pretty simple. The bank takes back the property and sells it. Well, how are they going to take back a property in Belize? They don't have expertise in the area. They don't know how to go about selling it. You know, it just creates a nightmare for them. So typically, Typically, U.S. and Canadian banks do not loan directly for offshore properties. Now, the workaround to that is where I, where I have seen U.S. banks uh, be, be play a key role in your financing a property in Belize is if you are able to get a home equity loan or a line of credit. And some of you are thinking, okay, that, that makes sense, but I don't have a hundred to three hundred thousand dollars worth of equity in my home that I can pull out of my US bank to buy something in Belize. Some of you might. So that might be a good option for you because typically the interest rates are low. You might get certain tax advantages by using your US bank like that. Again, they're not loaning you that money based on a particular property. You're taking that money out as a home equity or line of credit. But here's something else I want you to think about. Even if you can only take out, let's say, five or $10,000 or $15,000 as a line of credit from your bank, you might be able to use that as a down payment or as a portion of your financing of property in Belize. And I'm going to go ahead and get into specifics on how to do that here shortly on a condo that we have for sale at Belizean Shores. So any questions as far as using your U.S. or Canadian banks when it comes to financing at this time? Or does all that make sense? All right, very good. If a question comes up, let me know and I'll answer it uh, as we go through. The second question I get is, can I use a local Belizean bank to finance a property in Belize? Well, the, question, the simple answer is yes, you can. The local banking system is used extensively by local Belizeans. However, it has not been a popular option for expats. And for example, in the last 15 years that I've been buying and selling real estate in Belize, only two clients of mine have ever used bank financing. Now, why would that be? Well, it's not because it's difficult. It's actually no more difficult to get a loan at a Belize bank than it is to get a loan at your American bank. However, the terms that the Belize banks offer are a lot different than what we're used to in America. For example, they have a 40 to 50% loan to value ratio, which means if you're going to buy a property in Belize and you want Belize bank financing, you need to put down as a down payment 40 to 50% of the purchase price. Now that's okay for a lot of you. However, the interest rates of 10.5 to 12% can be 
very high, especially by American standards. And then to make a, the, the matter even worse, they often have shorter payoffs, so short uh, loan amortization. So they might go five years on a loan or, or 10 or 12 years on a loan. We're in the States, we can get a 20, 25, 30 year, no problem. So you can get bank financing in Belize through Belize Bank or Atlantic International. But again, it's just not as popular and alternatives seem to be preferable, especially for my expat buyers. Any questions on using local Belize Bank financing before we go on? All right, all pretty clear there. All right, let's go on to the next form of financing, direct developer financing on improved property. So for example, let's say a developer is building a new resort like Las Terrazas or let's say Cocoa Beach or something like that. Do the developers themselves offer financing? Well, it is common on new resort developments, but not on all units. As an example, if a developer is building, let's say, 50 units on his property, he's going to want most of those sales to be cash sales. So he doesn't want to become the bank on every single unit. So typically, developers are not offering financing on other units. They'll offer them on some of the units once they have enough cash in hand where they can completely build out the resort, including the pool and the pier and all the landscaping and everything. Once they've reached that threshold of cash, then they oftentimes are willing uh, to loan uh, the buyers uh, money to, to buy one of their condos or homes. Now, the terms are typically 25 to 50% down, loan to value ratio. The interest rates tend to be a bit better than through the Belize banks. I've seen them as low as 7.5%, but usually they're up around 9 or 10%. And the length of the loans varies, but the most I've seen is around a five to seven year loan amortization. So the developers, again, they don't want to be the bank, but they will be the bank to ensure the success of their resort projects. But they, they will on some units um, if it's short term. So if you plan to pay off the property within five years to seven years, you might have some good success going with a, a developer financing. Now, another way you can look at developer financing is on vacant land deals. Now, these types of deals Developers are, are normally willing to go longer term, accept a lower down payment, and they, it tends to be a very easy way uh, to get in the game with financing. The terms are typically 10 to 25% down payment. The interest rates are normally pegged at 10% for vacant land, but you'll find some developers willing to go all the way up to a 30-year amortization. So on vacant land deals, it's more common to find developers willing to go long term, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years, because basically at that point, they don't mind being in the bank. They don't mind collecting those checks every month. <clears throat> and really, there's a difference between developer financing on vacant land deals and developer financing on condos or homes. I mean, first of all, I'll give you an example of a developer financing deal on a piece of vacant land. This is an actual uh, current listing. We have two uh, vacant lots near Secret Beach, two blocks from Secret Beach in the Ambergris Woods subdivision. On this screen, you see those lots highlighted in green. So all of the lots in blue and red have sold. These two green lots uh, have come back on the market for sale. The purchase price on these are $35,000 each. The developer will finance them if you put a down payment down of 3500 to 6500 US. The balance is at 10% interest for 30 years. And with this deal, I like it because there's no prepayment penalty. So if you want to use the financing for two years, five years, 10 years, 15 years, all the way up to 30 years, it doesn't matter. You can pay off that note at any time. You can also make larger payments or lump sum payments any time. For example, usually every March or April when people get their tax refunds, we'll find buyers who have loans in place like this plopping down an extra thousand or two thousand dollars as they get their tax refunds. And this is a way to reduce the balance. Uh, that money goes entirely to the principal and it greatly shortens the length of the loan. So I like developer financing like this. Now you might be saying, what's the difference between developer financing on condos and homes? Why is it different on those properties compared to land? Well, it's very simple. On a condo or a home, the developer needs to get a much higher down payment because there's more risk involved. And for example, what if a seller trashes the place or neglects it or doesn't take care of it? Well, then the, the, the developer gets the property back 
he has to go in, repair it, get it up to snuff again in order to sell it. Uh, so with land, it's different. There's very little you can do to affect the value of land. Uh, so oftentimes with land, they'll go with a lower down payment and a much longer length of loan. All right, so that just takes care of the developer financing. Before we go on to our next point, do any, any of you have any questions on developer financing? If so, just type it there in the um, in the question box. And as you do that, I will uh, grab a drink of water. All right, good. No questions so far. Excellent. You must be saving all of them for the end. All right, so the next thing we have is individual seller offered financing. This is where a individual person or a group of people, for example, a husband and wife or a group of friends own a property together and they decide to sell it and they're willing to hold the note or be the bank. This is very, very simple for both the seller and the buyer. The terms are typically 10 to 30% down. 10% uh, interest is your standard rate, and I've seen uh, loans go anywhere from three years all the way up to a 30-year amortization. I really like individual seller financing, both on the buyer side and the seller, seller side, because it's a win-win for both parties. Here is a good example of this. We have this one-bedroom condo for sale right now at Belizean Shores. It's a Seaview condo, beautiful resort property, about three and a half miles north of San Pedro Town. It's a well-run resort. It's got a good name, uh, very high, uh, high uh, ratings on TripAdvisor. And the, my clients who own properties in this resort love it. They love to spend a lot of time there. And it's just an overall very, very good property. Well, there is a unit for sale there. This purchase price on it is 210000 US. The seller himself is offering financing at these terms. 25% down payment, which comes out to be right at about 50000 US. The balance at 6% interest for 10 years. So your monthly payments are 1776 a month with a five-year balloon payment. That means your payments are based on the 10-year mortgage. And you really are paying down quite a bit of the principal uh, at that rate, especially because it's only 6% interest. Uh, but at the end of five years, the seller wants, uh, wants to be paid off in full. So it's got a five-year balloon. We're saying to yourself, well, what happens if at the end of five years, uh, I don't have the money to pay off a loan? Well, at that point, you have so much uh, paid down on that. You could always renegotiate with a seller and see if he'll extend it a bit. Or you can just go to a Belize bank and get financing on the last little bit that's needed to pay it off. So something like this is an excellent example of where seller financing benefits both the seller and the buyer who doesn't have the full purchase price right now to pay in cash. Another example of seller buy financing is a lot that we have at Secret Beach. It is a sea view lot. For any of you who've been following me for any length of time, you know Secret Beach is the uh, latest up and coming area of Ambergris Key. It's a beautiful part of the island and no seagrass, no trash on the beaches. Beautiful swimming area for locals and uh, tourists alike. Well, there are sea view lots available, which these are second row lots. And here's the deal on those. The purchase price is 85,000 a piece. The seller will accept $15,000 down payment. Uh, the balance at 10% interest for 10 years in a three to five year balloon. So this is an excellent way for you as the buyer to get into a property on the island at today's prices, at today's values, put a small down payment of $15,000 on, and then just make monthly payments. Uh, hopefully you can pay it off in three to five years. Again, what it happens if you can, well, you can renegotiate, you can go to Belize Bank, you can refinance it, but this allows you at least three to five years uh, of, uh, of getting in the game and uh, taking advantage of today's prices. So the last thing I want to talk to you about is, as far as financing is using your existing IRA or your individual retirement account. Now, this is a very, very popular way uh, for people to invest in Belize and get their dream property. In fact, many of my, my listeners are surprised to hear that this money that you might have sitting in your IRA now that could be in the stock market or bonds or mutual funds, you can actually pull this money out of those and put them in Belize real estate. Now, you can use your money that you have in your IRA to make a cash purchase in Belize, or you can use your money uh, to put down a down payment on a property and then have your IRA make payments because you make an annual contribution. So several of my clients have done this. They use their IRA funds to buy properties with cash or 
to even finance properties in Belize using their IRAs. Now, the really uh, good reason to do this is because usually the money that you have in your IRA now is not making you much of a return. In Belize, you can do much, much better. So those are the, the, the ways you can finance a property in Belize. Uh, number one, you can use your American banks, not by getting a direct loan on a property in Belize, a specific property, but by pulling money out using a home equity loan or line of credit. Number two, you can finance through Belize banks. Number three, you can use developer financing. Number four, seller financing. And number five, you can use your existing IRA, whatever cash you have accumulated, to make a cash purchase or finance a property in Belize. Now, here are some things that uh, I've found working with different clients over the past 10, 15 years. Uh, things that are very peculiar to Belize that may or may not help you get into a certain property. So here's three things that I will call creative financing. Uh, nothing illegal, but this is what we have found to work in some cases. So number one, under creative financing, the extended close. Now, typically, we can do this anywhere from six months to less than one year. And what I mean by that is you get a property under contract, and you can say you say to, to, the, uh, to the seller, okay, I will have the money to pay you in full on this property, but I don't have the money today. It's going to take me three months, six months, nine months, no longer than, than nine or ten months, definitely under a year. But you can say I am willing to pay you in full within this period of time, and here's the way we can structure it. I'm willing to give you 25% down under contract, another 25% in three months, another 25% in six months, and the final 25% at nine months. Now, how does this work in reality? Well, I've actually done a deal on this with one of my clients. They were purchasing a piece of vacant land around the Secret Beach area. I didn't have the, the full amount to write the check in full at closing. So what we did is we structured it in two payments. The payment was 50% down at closing and then 50% down, I think, within six months. So we had six months to come up with the balance. And from talking with many of you, this is actually a good way to, 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 to look at doing it because you might have money tied up in a certain property. Perhaps you own a home or land in the U.S. or Canada that you're currently trying to market and sell, and you're fairly certain that you'll be able to do that within a short period of time. Well, if you can go under contract now and know that within three, six, or nine months, you'll be able to pay off that balance, then you can ask for the extended close. So let's go back to this other example here real quick of the Belizean Shores condo. Uh, Belizean Shores, okay, so purchase price 210. If you know that uh, you're gonna, out of that $50,000 down payment, let's say you don't have the 50,000 right now, you have 25, but if you know that in six months you could get the other 25,000, you could say, look, I'm willing to give you 25,000 now, 25,000 is six months, that'll be 50, and then at the six month mark, let's continue to close, and then we'll go ahead and, and finance the balance at 6% for 10 years like you suggested. So there are certain things you can do when it comes to asking for the extended close. Does that make sense? All right, very good. The second thing I wanna to talk to you about when it comes to creative financing is what to do regarding balloon payments and refis, uh, refinancing deals. So for example, let's go back up to this example of the uh, Seaview lots in Secret Beach. All right, so this seller wants uh, $15,000 down. Uh, he'll do the uh, balance at 10% interest for 10 years, wants a five-year balloon. Okay, so what you would do is if you say to yourself, okay, I am comfortable with this. I got the 15, no problem paying the monthly payments for 10 years, but in five years, I don't know where I'm going to be. I don't know if I'll have enough liquid cash to pay them off. We simply calculate the, the payoff amount, and we can determine at that time, or actually we can determine now what your payoff will be in five years if you just make the minimum monthly payments. And then we can say, okay, what could we do in five years to ensure that you can pay off this seller and get into some other type of financing? So that could be private financing, that could be Belize Bank financing, that could be some sort of home equity loan or home line of credit that you could pull out for the United States. But we look at that to see if we can find a way 
to make the refinancing much easier for you. Now, this allows you to get into the game now, and then with the assurity or the assurance that in five years, you'll be able to refinance if you need to. So that's sort of my creative financing uh, uh, step number two. Not really that, that uh, creative, but I, I've seen it worked in some cases. This third way, though, is something that I've seen work quite a bit, is that is combining different types of financing to get into a deal now because it makes sense for you to buy something now because you're getting a perhaps a good deal on it, the seller wants out, and you're able to swoop in and get something under contract. This is what I've seen work really well, is using different types of financing in combination. As an example, on this slide, you have some cash in hand, maybe that's in the savings account or in your checking account. You use that cash, plus, Maybe you can pull out a little bit of money out of your home, so you get a home equity loan from your bank. So those two things, cash plus home equity loan, and then you could get something under contract with seller financing. Or, as an example, on a uh, initial purchase or a smaller purchase, you have some cash in the bank, and you're able to pull some money on your credit card. <coughs> You can use that credit card to make a down payment, uh, to make uh, your closing costs, do things like that, or maybe even get a cash advance, then go under developer financing. Here are some examples of how we've done both of these on different properties. As an example, go back to that Belizean Shores Resort. So again, purchase price 210, he's asking for a $50,000 down payment. Let's say to yourself, if you have $25,000 in cash reserves now, and you can pull out $25,000 in your home equity loan. Now you have the 50 to go on a contract with that, with that condo. Now with that $25,000 home equity loan, the interest rate is going to be very, very good. You might be able to um, pay that you know, over 25, 30 years, uh, depending on your bank and, and what they require. Excuse me a minute. <coughs> and you might even get some sort of tax benefits in the States. But this is a good way of combining your cash you have on hand with a home equity loan to get something under contract and use that uh, financing. Here is another example that you could you could use on this. Let's say you wanted to buy one of those lots in Ambergris Woods. Well, the down payment minimum on that is 3,500. So let's say you're, you're just cash strapped. You don't have much right now, but you have half of it. So you have 1,750 in cash. Go put the other, 1750 on a zero interest credit card and just make sure you pay that off within a year. You don't have no additional uh, uh, cost involved, but now you have the 3500 to get that property uh, under contract. Or let's say you go with a recommended amount of 6500 down. Let's say you have 3250 in cash and for the other 3250 you ask for the extended close. So maybe you know that within the next two to four months, you can raise some cash. Maybe you have some, some money coming in from somewhere. And so you say, look, to the developer, I will put 3250 down now. Please allow me the next two to four months as an extension on the closing to come up with the other portion. And then once I have my 6500 ready, boom, I'll pull the trigger, we'll go to close, and then I'll just start with my monthly payments. So this is a good way to think about coming up with the money uh, to make those minimum down payments needed to get something under financing. So here are some questions that you guys have been asking over the past week since I've launched this webinar uh, regarding financing. So we'll just go through a few of these questions now that I pre-selected before we get to your live questions. So first of all, the question is, when do I receive title when financing a property? So as a buyer, if you put a property under contract and you're financing it, that title stays in the name of the seller until you pay it off completely. The title is usually held in escrow. There's a caution that we file against the title, so you're 100% protected. The seller can't do anything with the title. He can't sell the property again to anybody. This is a very legal, legitimate way to secure your interest. But once you make that final payment, then you take title. You can take title in your personal name. You can form a simple company such as an LLC or an IBC, but title transfers in Belize after the buyer makes their final payment. Next question, how am I protected and guarantee my interest in the property? Simple, the title is kept in escrow. 
or we file a simple caution against it, just like you would in the state. So when there's a title search that is ran, it shows that you have an interest in your property. You're 100% protected. You cannot lose it. Uh, there, there's nothing that the seller can do uh, to, to screw you out of your payments or your deal or your title or anything. Uh, I've never seen this happen in Belize, especially if you go through a legitimate and proper closing company, which we do on all of our deals. Next question. What if I get behind in my payments? This is a good, excellent question. This is something to consider. The, uh, the way the contracts are written is that you have 45 days to get caught up. The seller needs to, uh, the buyer needs to, excuse me, the seller needs to uh, remind you of this by registered letter. Now, here's the deal. If you get behind on your payments, the seller does not want you to default. Obviously, he wants you to keep making the, those payments. It's in his best interest to work with you. For example, I have several properties myself, which I have sold uh, with seller financing in place. So I have uh, at least a dozen buyers of my own properties. And once in a while, they'll get behind for legitimate reason. Uh, one of my clients was involved in the hurricane relief work in the United States this past few months. So they've been busy and other of my clients that serve overseas, they get busy, uh, go on or, uh, you know, go on missions or whatnot. I can't reveal too much, but anyways, there are some very legitimate reasons why a buyer will miss a payment or two, but as long as they keep in contact with me and let me know that, Hey, they're going to get caught up. It's not a problem. When it is a problem is if you miss payments, there's no communication, and now you're getting way behind. Well, eventually, after you miss so many payments and you're making no effort to get caught up, well, then there has to be a default. So you're in danger of losing the property, losing your down payment, and so forth. But this is no different than buying a property in the U.S. or Canada. Once you get so far behind, you have to make amends somehow. So that's the answer on that. How does this affect my credit rating? And will it hurt my credit score if I default? Well, first of all, let's answer the first question, is that when you buy a property in Belize, there is no reporting of that purchase to any credit reporting uh, companies in the U.S. or the IRS or anything else. So it is completely between you and the developer or the seller or the bank in Belize. Uh, no one knows about this in the United States or Canada. Again, it's not something illegal or that we're trying to keep hush-hush. It's just that there is no reporting uh, by law needed, and so it doesn't take place. So, for example, if uh, if you go to buy a property in Belize to develop or seller financing, no credit checks are ran, the bank isn't going to do any research on you in the U.S. or Canada, so it does not affect your credit rating at all. And because of that, if you do default, all right, no one wants to do that, but hey, it happens once in a while, it's life, things happen, at least it doesn't affect your credit score. So in the rare event that your, your deal goes through, you won't affect your credit score or your ability to get another loan in the U.S. So I think that's good news. Next question. What about cash flow? Going back to this uh, Robert Kiyosaki quote about uh, wanting to buy properties that cash flow. Well, cash flow for me is defined as this, where a property is financed and a renter, it could be a short-term renter or a long-term renter, helps pay for all or a portion of the monthly payment. Now, where this works well is in the United States and Canada with apartment buildings. So, for example, you might buy a 16 or 24-unit apartment building. You might put 25% down, and then you hope that that place is full, it's rented out well, and with that rental money income that you have coming in, you're able to make your monthly mortgage payment, plus cover your taxes and insurance and things like that, and maintenance and upkeep on the property. That does work on select properties in the United States because the financing there is so reasonable. You can get financing at 4 or 5% in the states. As you've seen, as we've gone through this presentation, the interest rates in Belize are much higher. So cash flow is something that we don't often achieve in Belize on a financed property. Now, in a cash deal, it's different. Cash deals do quite well as far as making some, some decent returns. But here's things to keep in mind when you're talking about cash flow. Will an individual home or condo cash flow in Belize if you are purchasing it on financing? The general answer is no, it won't. But here's the things that here's the the uh, factors that go into determining if it will or won't. Number one, the terms of the loan. Obviously, if you have a 50% down payment on a property, then it's much better than if you try to get away with 15 or 20%. It also depends on the nightly and monthly rental rates. 
So for example, if a condo rents for 100 bucks a night or 500 bucks a night, it's going to make a difference in whether it cash flows. If you're going for a long-term rental place, uh, you're looking at what is the monthly rate for, for that, for, for the renter. The occupancy rate, how many nights per month a place is rented or how many months out of the year your place is rented. And then things such as HOA fees, management fees, and other. So as an example, going back to that condo, again, let me just scroll back to the slides at Belizean Shores. Okay, so this one bedroom, beautiful sea view condo. If you purchased it cash and you put it in the rental pool, that rental income would cover all of your taxes, your insurance, your HOA fees, your property maintenance, your upkeep, and it would put some money in your pocket every year. That money in your pocket would depend on occupancy rates and so forth, but it's probably going to be between four and six thousand dollars a year profit that you would make on this property if you purchased cash. Now, Will it cash flow if you use financing? Well, probably not because you have to take into consideration now that you are financing almost $160,000 uh, with the seller at 6% interest. And so you're going to have monthly payments of $1,776 a month. All right. The income, if you call the income at $6,000 a year here, you see you're going to have to come up with some money out of pocket. So it's very difficult to find a property in Belize that, that uh, for the strict definition of the term cash flows, unless you purchase a property outright. Let's go back to our other slides. Let's get through them here. Uh, okay. All right, good. So let's talk about putting it all together and how to make it work. Again, going back to Robert Kiyosaki, how can I afford this? Let me give you one more example. For those of you looking to get in the game fairly easy, here is an example of vacant land we have for sale in the Palm View Estates. Oops. Oh, come on. I hope that didn't just um, – I just had somebody call me, and I'm not sure if uh, this affected your slide viewing. Hopefully not. All right. One second, guys. Okay. All right. So here's the deal. Palm View Estates, vacant land, 25000 U.S. You can purchase that cash. No problem, or you can finance it. One second, I'm sorry, guys. When people call, it also goes to my iPad, and then I think it's affecting what you're viewing. It's probably not. All right. So the down payment on the Palm View Estates lots is twenty thousand or twenty percent, so five thousand dollars down. You can use, you can uh, put that five thousand dollars down with cash you have in hand, or you can put that on a credit card. You can get a line of credit. You can get a home equity loan. You can borrow from your grandma or sell the junk you have lying around the house. Whatever you need to do to come up with that $5,000, you can do to take advantage of the developer financing. Or let's say you, you the, the most money you can raise as an option B is $2,500 down. I will personally loan you from my own funds the other $2,500 so that you can come up with the $5,000. And then you will have a loan with a developer of $20,000. So the $20,000 loan with the developer means your payments are $225 a month, including all fees. So that's your all-in amount. So if you want a property on Ambergris Key, which is about a five-minute golf cart right from golf cart ride from Secret Beach or from the east side beaches where the Barrier Reef is. Again, total purchase price is $25,000, $5,000 down to get in the game. Monthly payments are only $225, $225, and that includes everything. Now, Larry, okay, let, me get a, let me get a sip of water. My throat's giving out. Where to come up with the $5,000 or how to come up with the $225 a month. And I realize that for some, even this is a stretch, and that's okay. You know, I got to say, a, a good amount of my sales are to people who aren't rich. They're not independently wealthy, but they do have the Belizean dream, and they want to find some way to get their feet wet, to get a toehold on the market. And so maybe going with a lot like this is all they can do for now and for the foreseeable future. They might not even build on this lot for 10, 15, 20 years, but they want something. I don't blame them for that. So here's my advice to you who are in this situation. 
go on YouTube after this uh, webinar is finished and type in uh, Gary Vaynerchuk 2017 Flip Challenge. If any of you are followers of Gary V, you know he's a internet uh, internet guy. He's an entrepreneur, and he's really all about helping people to build their businesses, build their wealth. And he came out in 2017 with this Flip Challenge of how to make two twenty thousand dollars in one year buying and selling things on eBay through garage sales to all the stuff you have in your basement that you don't use. And I thought this was really, really cool. And actually, some of my clients have taken them up on this offer and they have used some of these tips and tricks that Gary Vee put in this video to come up with their down payment or to make money each month to come up with their lot payment. Now, what he tells you to do is to go through all the junk in your house that you no longer use, those old TVs, your old football car collections, your baseball car collections, your clothes you don't wear anymore, your shoes, um, your old cell phones, everything, and just sell that stuff. You'd be surprised. The average person has five hundred to five thousand dollars worth of just stuff lying around that they don't use anymore. Take that that those things, sell it, and, and make a thousand or two thousand dollars to come up with that down payment or he will show you how to go to garage sales, Goodwill, family and friends, sell their stuff too. Ask your brother and sister or, or your best friends what they have down their basements that they want sold and offer to give them, you know, a half of the money for it. Just, you know, take it, spend two or three hours every Saturday for the next several months and go ahead and just make, make a boatload of money and use that money uh, to, to make your down payment or your monthly payments on the uh, on your property in Belize. Believe me, I think this will work because 225 bucks a month might be a stretch for your current budget. And I know times are tough sometimes, but you can easily make an extra 225 by uh, applying some of Gary V's tips and tricks. So just want to run that by. I think it's kind of cool, and it might enable some of you to um, to uh, to go ahead and pull the sugar on something. So again, the reason for this webinar is to help all of you get an idea of what you can do to finance a property in Belize. And again, these are just the lifestyle picks because everything I've talked about regarding numbers and interest rates and loan terms and everything, real estate is just a tool uh, to get you in Belize so that long-term you can enjoy the quality of life that it offers. So you can come down and get out of the cold winters. You can spend one, two, three months a year here. You can eventually retire here if you want. Uh, you can you know, just live the, the island lifestyle, the Belize lifestyle. And I'm just here to help you to do that. So uh, investing in Belize real estate has helped me and staff to live the life we want. And hopefully we can help you to do the same. So that's enough talking for me for a bit. I have been on for about 42 minutes. All right. So we appreciate that. And uh, what I want to do now is uh, open it up to you guys. Uh, if you have any questions regarding the financing that I've talked about or the property deals that I, that I showed you, go ahead and type those questions in or... If you have questions on anything else that you've been thinking about that you want me to cover, I have just a few minutes here before my next appointment, and I'll be happy to, uh, to answer some of those for you. So I'm just going to grab a drink of water, and while I do that, and while you're thinking about your questions, uh, let me just pop a uh, – I should have done this at the beginning. It's a little poll that I usually run at the beginning of all my webinars uh, to just get a little bit of data on who my viewers are today. Uh, so this is a poll that I normally do at the beginning. Please uh, let me know why you are attending this webinar today. And you've got four choices. If you're just curious about Belize and want to know more, if you're looking to own vacation property, uh, if you want to retire in Belize, or uh, if you want to invest for the financial investment in Belize real estate, please just take a minute and go ahead and vote. I really appreciate if you do if you do that. And then once you're done, I will share the screen uh, with all of you, and so you uh, you get to see what other people are looking at as well. So. Please go ahead, take a, just you know 10 seconds, do me a favor, and take the poll, and that'll help me out in my, in my future webinars. All right. So it looks like the uh, most of you are voting. I'm going to close the poll. I'll share it on the screen. So it looks like 25% of you are looking to own vacation property. 50% would like to retire in Belize, and 25% would like to invest in Belize for the financial returns. Excellent. Very good. Uh, so if you have specific questions on each of those, you can ask me now or you can ask me in, a, in an email. Um, 
I'll be ever ha happy to answer any questions you have on those. Now, one more thing. Let's see, regarding the financing, uh, do you need financing? Let me just run this real quick since this was the financing webinar. Uh, let me ask you these questions. Uh, do you need financing? So the five options are uh, no, I have cash. Yes, you have a large down payment. Yes, you have a small down payment. And then you need long-term or short-term financing. You, you are able to choose more than one option. So if you would, again, please uh, just take do me a favor. Take a minute and go ahead and, and just vote. And then I can look at this information when the webinar is done. And I can compile uh, uh, some, uh, some better, not better, I should say, uh, more options uh, for you guys, depending on what exactly you're looking for. All right. So go ahead and vote. Do, 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 do. Thank you guys. I really appreciate this. Appreciate you doing me this favor. All right. I'll go ahead and close the poll. I'll share the results so you guys can see. Uh, everyone, uh, so no one attending today needs cash. So I guess it is the financing webinar. 33% uh, have a large down payment. 67% have a small down payment. And all of you say you would like long-term financing. Well, that's good to know. That's good to know because what I can do is I can use this information and share it with my sellers to, uh, who are offering shorter terms. Say, look, you guys want to get some real interest in these properties, uh, offer some long-term options, and we might be able to sell it quicker for you. All right, excellent. So I'll hide those result, results. All right, so we have a question here about um, uh, health care from James. Thanks, James. Uh, so let's see. He said, uh, I'm not sure. He said, this this uh, this attendee today says, I'm a Medicare and get prescriptions via USPS. How is it down there? So we have different uh, options. First of all, the healthcare in Belize is very good, both on the island and on the mainland. We have uh, excellent doctors, excellent surgeons, uh, a very good quality of healthcare. With prescriptions, what, what normally my clients are able to do is if they come down for, say, three to six months a year, I normally tell their doctors or have them tell their doctors to write them a three or six month prescription, especially if it's something that can be filled like at Sam's Club or one of the, uh, the, the larger pharmacies, then they can give you a several month prescription. So for instance, example, they'll do this a lot of times on blood pressure medicines or different things like that. Um, and you can fill that prescription in the States, come down to Belize, especially if you go back more frequently, say, you know, every three or four months where you can get that filled, it's going to be the cheapest. However, with most prescriptions, you can get them on Island. I'm not sure when it comes to Medicare, the cost involved though, uh, you might have to pay out of pocket in Belize for your prescriptions. Um, but again, I, I think with most of my clients, because they do go back to the States relatively often through the year, they just have their doctor write them a longer term prescription. With other things that you need to get filled by the month, for example, your, your higher class of narcotics or whatnot, that can be a little tricky. Uh, Belize does have a, uh, various pain pills such as tramadol and things like that that are, are classified a little bit higher in the U.S., uh, but those are available over the counter in Belize. And in very rare cases, we've seen some prescriptions uh, not, not be available. Uh, but that's something you can come down with one visit to the island, go into some, one of the pharmacies and ask specifically what you're taking, and then you'll be able to get the answer at first hand. That's a good question. We appreciate that and uh, something, to, um, uh, something to research. All right. Any other questions for me at this time? Anything on financing or lifestyle or anything else? You guys have been a good, a good audience. Uh, and based on that, I will think I'll end here just because my voice is going out. But I appreciate all of you attending today. You've been great. If you have any questions regarding the properties I highlighted, regarding anything specific, remember, please, to email me, DennisKII at gmail.com. And I will be uh, – th this has been recorded. I will be editing this and uploading it to my YouTube channel and sending it out to all of you very shortly. Again, thanks a lot. I appreciate you guys attending and hope to see you down in paradise soon. Until then, talk to you, talk to you soon. Cheers.